Hey everyone, my name is Aryan Malik. I am currently a nursing student. In this video, I'll be going over some drugs that I found were very important and helpful for the NCLEX. Before I jump onto the drugs, it is very important to know that most of the drugs are detoxified by the liver. The first drug is Dilantin. It is a drug which is given for seizures. And when giving Dilantin, what do we monitor? What is its side effects? It's the bleeding of the gums. So when we have given Dilantin for seizures, the question might show up. The patient is bleeding. What do we do? We report to the provider it as a side effect of the drug. The two other important terms uh, when giving drugs is called phlebitis and infiltration. So phlebitis is basically the inflation, inflammation uh, or the reddened warm area that we see in the IV site. And what do we do when we see it? We apply a warm compress and before we do that, we remove the IV, we stop the IV, we discontinue the IV and we place it in another hand. Another thing which is very important for phlebitis, for phlebitis to know is that um, it can also be generated uh, because of infection or the IV fluid being very strong. For patients who are undergoing chemotherapy, these IV fluids might be too strong for them uh, causing phlebitis and it can also be because of the nurse didn't follow the proper sterile technique. Now the second term is called infiltration. So infiltration is basically that IV is not going in the vein, rather it is going in the tissue. How it might show up in the form of a swelling and it might feel cold to touch because of the fluid that has pen uh, penetrated the tissues. As a nurse, it is very important for you to monitor phlebitis and infiltration when giving the IV. And uh, for infiltration, the intervention that a nurse usually does is they elevate the patient's arm that helps uh, reduce uh, the swelling. The next drug which we are talking about is Lasix. It's a loop diuretic and we all know loop diuretic, they act on kidney. And the side effect of Lasix is that it uh, the patient loses potassium when they are on Lasix. So what we as nurse have to do is we have to give the patient orange juice and bananas that will help patient regain some of the potassium because these foods are high in potassium. The next drug is aminophilin. It's a bronchodilator. We know that bronchodilator, they affect the heart and aminophilin is from the xanthin group. Um, the side effects to watch out for are palpitation, dysrhythmias, irregular heartbeat which usually shows up on the EKG and nervousness. So these three side effects are uh, common across the board uh, for bronchodilators that we need to watch out for. The toxic effect which means that uh, the dose has been given more than it, what it was prescribed for. It can uh, lead to tachycardia, increased heart rate which can in turn lead to seizure patient can go to seizure because of its toxicity and what not to give a patient who's on a bronchodilator we should avoid giving them caffeine and we should monitor for any cardiac problem because the bronchodilators affect directly the heart the next drug that i'm going to talk about is morphine sulfate as we all know morphine it is given for pain uh, it basically decreases the blood return to the heart and it relieves anxiety and pain as we all know when giving this drug we need to monitor for respiratory distress and sometimes in clicks they show up as constipation for long time use if a patient is on morphine sulfate for long time it can show up as a constipation as a side effect. The next and the last drug is dopamine. It's vasoactive, meaning it affects the blood vessel. It is given IV. And for example, a patient shows up whose BP is decreasing at a constant speed and it's he's hypotensive. It's in a hypotensive crisis. The patient is moving towards shock or patient is having an MI or a heart attack dopamine is given to raise the blood pressure the side effect of dopamine is hypertension and when giving this drug the nurse needs to monitor for blood pressure 
every two minutes until it is stabilized and also for dysarrhythmias. I hope you like the video. Uh, please subscribe the channel so that you can stay up to date with the future NCLEX review videos that I will be putting up. Thank you.